Welcome to Master Gardeners of Ottawa Carleton Trowel Talk. This week, cold frames for a longer season, for a longer growing season with Odette McIntyre. Odette is a master gardener of Ottawa Carleton, and at the age of eight, she discovered her passion for horticulture. So her interest in horticulture and ecology intensified as she studied plant science at Institut de Technologie Agricole. Odette is bilingual and became a master gardener in 2015. She shared her love and knowledge of plants with York Region Gardeners, Three Lakes Simcoe South Master Gardeners Advice Clinic giving workshop, including a range of organic gardening topics. She transferred to Toronto Master Gardeners in 2016, where she joined the executive as continuing education coordinator she has now relocated to Ottawa region to be closer to her daughter and grandbaby. Questions can be typed into the chat and will be answered at the end. Claire will be answering the questions at the very end from the chat. Thank you. Great, thanks, Cynthia. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so happy you're here today. I'm really excited about uh, presenting about one of my favorite topics, which is cold frames. So it just so happens that this is the right timing to be presenting this, uh, this uh, presentation because uh, this is the, the right time to get organized. If you're planning to have a cold crop, uh, a cold frame uh, crop in the spring 2023, now is a good time to sort it out and get uh, uh, figure it out, right? So welcome to this presentation about cold frames. Um, I started uh, experimenting with uh, cold frames um, in my early years. Uh, I'm from Quebec City and cold frames are kind of uh, uh, popular there. You see them quite a bit. So I grew up with them, but uh, in the last 10 years, and I was in the GTA at that point, um, I've experimented uh, quite a bit with them with uh, various success. Some, day, some days it wasn't, uh, some years it wasn't that great, but uh, I've learned and um, lessons learned, right? Uh, I've, I'm now managing to add um, uh, two crops uh, to the normal uh, scenario. So I'm adding um, one crop in the early spring. So sometimes at, I guess at the end of uh, April and uh, another crop at the end of November. So, you know, so I've learned a little bit. Um, and so today uh, we'll, uh, we'll be uh, talking about starting your garden as early as possible and uh, using basic structures such as cold frames. I uh, will discuss why one would have a cold frame, like the reasons, we'll look at the options. I uh, will have a quick look at uh, cold crop selections because they go hand in hand with uh, using a cold frame. And um, uh, I'll also uh, give you a step-by-step -step, uh, implementation of the cold frame production. All right. Let's begin with the why, which I call the philosophy. So does this photo to uh, the right, uh, to the left, does this photo remind you of uh, something that happened in a couple of years ago? Okay, so this is at the start of the pandemic. Overnight, the shelves became like this. Overnight, the shelves were empty. And I'm not even talking about the produce area. Like, you know, the, sh the shelving was, was completely empty. Remember the toilet paper? So that was, that was another thing that happened uh, overnight, literally, right? And so, uh, so this was the first um, thing, the first time that, uh, that I realized that, yes, our supply chain is, uh, is threatened here. And it, I, became, um, I became really adamant that I start uh, improving on my fresh food self-reliance. It became a philosophy, you would call it. And then we had, of course, the um, Freedom Convoy more recently. And again, our uh, supply chain was being uh, threatened again, you know, and, and so it reinforced for me the uh, idea that we need to uh, improve our fresh food self-reliance. And then I have this article, this newspaper clipping that I put here. It's a news, not newspaper, it's from the CDC uh, news, um, uh, news website. 
And uh, it shows you here that uh, California's droughts shows the importance of finding ways to grow food year round in Canada. So I, I just wanted to put that there because uh, it's not just me that's thinking about that. Even the, the media is telling us that we have to start um, adding that maybe growing some stuff ourselves. And well, cold frames is, is a good solution here. Okay, so historically uh, cold frames, as, as I was saying, it's not a new idea. This is an ancient idea. Uh, there's evidence, historical evidence that um, the Romans were using them. And, um, and, 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 you know, they used to use um, uh, hay, like they used to make uh, hay walls, walls of hay, or they used stones, and then they used sheets of mica on top. I thought that was interesting. Um, so sheets of mica on top, and they, they used that as a um, production, especially when they started moving the army to the north of uh, Europe, and they, they, they looked for, for that to, um, to help them supply the army with fresh food. And of course, if the Romans did it, well, other people did it too. And so all of Europe soon was doing cold, um, cold frame production, and the Europeans brought that with them to... Um, to uh, I guess this continent when they when they came over, and then it fell in and out of popularity over the years. But um, it's uh, it's regained more recently. It's regained in popularity, so people are interested in that stuff. Especially, um, it's probably because of Nikki Jabor. You know, J Nikki Jabor is uh, is talking about it quite a bit, and um, so I think a lot of people are paying attention to to that. Okay. So we'll uh, go to the next slide, um, right? Cold frames. So what are cold frames in the first place? Like, well, what am I talking about here? So they're basically a frame uh, made out of metal, wood, or plastic, and it's covered with um, a plastic sheet or and then stapled, or it could be covered with um, glass window panes. So it doesn't matter what the model is really, all of them use passive heat. And that's the fundamental of a cold frame is that they use passive heat. So you'll ask me, what is passive heat? What are we talking about? Uh, so I'm going to bring you to uh, grade 11 physics. And uh, a lot of people cringe when they hear about uh, grade 11 physics, but, um, but anyway, here we are. Uh, so we'll talk about um, the nature of light. And uh, we learned that in grade 11. So the nature of light is first you have the photons. So those are the particles. You look at the light, you can look at it as a, made out of particles. And those are called the photons. And they always travel at the same speed. It's a constant, right? The other aspect of, of uh, light is that it's a wave. And that's the part that's relevant to us, to the cold frames. And... Um, so let's look at it. So I, I have this little schematic that I found on the Australian government um, site. I just thought it was, uh, it explains quite easily what happens here. So, so the wavelength, so this, that's the sun here and it sends rays and uh, it's short wave. When the like UV light and you know like the, the light that's traveling from the sun, it, they're actually short wave uh, radiation. And as it crosses here, the window or the plastic in the case of our cold frames, it transforms, it decomposes into longer wave radiation. And that long wave radiation can't escape the, through the window again, it just has to stay inside. And this long wave radiation is also known as infrared. So it's heat, right? It's heat. So it stays trapped indoors. And, and so I just wanted to say that uh, the beauty of um, this infrared uh, passive heat is that it's free, right? So it's, it's um, very simple. Okay. Um, the other thing that uh, a cold frame does is that um, it protects against the wind. So that's an important factor that, um, you know, if you're just open, uh, open field growing things, uh, growing things in an open field, uh, you, uh, unfortunately, the wind is there and it's very much a factor, right? So the seedlings don't like the wind. So it works, and especially 
if you tuck in the size of your cold frame, so like I ramp up soil all along the base of my cold frame, and uh, so it stays nice and cozy inside, right? Um, okay, so I'm showing pictures here of my cold frames. Uh, those are my my own. So the, the one to the left here is um, the model I had in the GTA. Um, people that are familiar with the GTA know that we all have small backyards. So uh, so this was my small backyard version, very small cold frame. However, it still provided me with some stuff, right? And, um, and it was free. So it's made out of two by twos, uh, recycled wood really, and the plastic on top. There's a hinge that uh, you can raise, a hinge lid that you can uh, lift to garden inside, then you close it again. Um, so it's very, it costs about $10 to make a cold frame like this, very, very inexpensive, and there's absolutely no maintenance. You don't do anything to it. You just uh, remove it in May, put it in the garage, bring it back out in the fall, and that's that. So the, if you have a smaller yard, this is an easy one to implement. Um, you can see what I was growing, that, that, that other photo next to it, uh, to the right, you can see what I was growing. I was growing lettuce. Uh, rapini, some more letters here I'm seeing, and um, so I had some strawberries <laughs> going in there too. I think they just were there. But this is um, this is in ground gardening, right? I, I'm not bringing pots in my cold frame. It's in ground in the soil, right? Okay. Next to it, to the right again. So we have this cold frame that I've built here since I've moved to Ottawa. And the photo here was taken on March 8, 2021. You can see there's quite a bit of snow left on uh, both sides, but uh, inside it was ready to grow. So we'll talk about how I figured that out that it was ready in 2021. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But uh, when it, what I wanted to describe here is that um, it's about $50 to, to build some, something like this. Uh, $50 would be for the plastic. Uh, the, um, so inside it's uh, plastic ribbing, so the pipes, uh, so the plastic ribbing and the hardware. So that's about $50. So just to give you um, an idea, uh, there's a bit of uh, uh, recycled wood. You can see my two, uh, my two by fours are uh, from a construction site. And uh, my, I have a door that's uh, on the side here. So it's important to have an access to your cold frame, right? Um, so a door either on the top, or the front, um, it, you need to come up with a system to, to um, be able to access your crops. Okay, we'll look at the next, yeah, that we've seen. Okay, so yes, there's lots of models uh, online, right? There's lots of stuff you can look at, lots of, um, it's easy to find, um, you know, there's um, lots of ready-made uh, kits as well, like, you know, Wayfair, uh, $350, Etsy, kind of the same price range, Lowe's, Loblaws, like, you know, all the big box stores, they all have, um, you know, ready-to-assemble models, or you can um, look and get some scale plans that uh, you'll find online. So it's very easy to come up with something uh, online, right? So different costs and uh, different things. Uh, what did I put here? So I'm showing uh, what you have to decide, I guess, is first first consideration. First consideration when you decide to have a cold frame is whether you're gonna grow right in the ground or if you're gonna bring in pots, you know? So uh, for example, commercial growers, like, you know, uh, garden centers, um, annual producers, like all these people, so they use sterile, sterile soil, so they don't grow in the ground, right? They, they bring in uh, boxes, plant boxes, and they put them in their cold frames. So their cold frames don't look like this, like you have to imagine it's huge greenhouses, but they're not heated. So, so they have, uh, they bring in the boxes and mostly it's to harden off plants at that point. They, they're not really um, growing from the start. So, are you going to be using uh, plant boxes or are you going to be using, are you going to be growing straight in the ground? So myself, like the homeowners, 
usually they just grow straight in the ground and they bring in later on, they bring in their uh, annuals that they want to harden off, right? That you, you can bring in later on like your tomato plants or uh, pepper plants or whatever to harden them up before you plant them in ground. So, so those are the options to consider. That's the first thing because you'll go, uh, you'll go differently about it, right? You'll, you'll choose a different model and uh, you'll go diff like you'll install it differently. Um, I, um, and then you decide if you're going to do glass or plastic and then, um, and yes, you have to make sure that there's going to be an access door. Um, I put this photo here at the bottom because I just thought, um, I saw that this summer and I just thought, oh, that's a pretty cool, uh, looking cold frame. So I liked that I put it there. Um, I've seen, uh, I've seen people build, uh, cold frames out of recycled windows. And I really like that. And I think that my next uh, my next cold frame will be made out of recycled window. So I just I wanted to say that if you know a source of recycled windows and you're handy, well, uh, don't hold back and uh, go right ahead and get yourself a cold frame. Okay, so uh, more options about cold frame. So I'm, I'm showing uh, three photos here. It's the first one on the left. It shows you uh, by cold frame. Uh, so that was in 2021. Remember, previous photo, we looked at March 8th. So this is, uh, no, that was the other one before that. But anyway, uh, March 8th. So this is on April 29th. And at this point, um, so my lettuce at the back is ready, spinach at the back, ready. Um, and uh, I have some, uh, um, what is this? Um, tatsoi on the side. So Asian greens anyway, and I've got more lettuce on uh, the left side and onions. And, and then in the middle, I put my strip of uh, old carpeting and uh, I kneel on my strip of old carpeting to do my gardening. And then uh, later on, I usually place, um, I place my, uh, my tomato plants and stuff to harden, to harden them off before I plant them in the main garden, right? So that's the uh, main thing that I wanted to show here. Uh, the photo in the middle, it shows you at the other end of the summer, right? It shows you this picture was taken on October 17. And um, at that point, I had started uh, the, the, the whole main garden was pretty well done. I didn't have much left, uh, maybe some broccoli and um, uh, Brussels sprouts and that kind of stuff. But anyway, so in here, I've placed, uh, I've transplanted some lettuce. And, um, and you know, that crop here on October 17, that crop will be ready, I would say mid-December. Uh, just the, the thing about growing um, greens in the fall is that there's not that much light. And, um, and so things grow a lot more slowly, I would say, than uh, they grow uh, in the spring. So just a, a, hands, a heads up. This photo on the left, on the right, Left, right, left, right. Okay, this photo here on the right is um, it's with a floating roll cover. So that's a an interesting alternative for to the the cold frame. You can use um, uh, floating roll covers. I think they're great. Like inside this floating roll cover, there's um, uh, there's uh, kale and there's also letters, right? And um, so that's a good option. It's just like to start things in the spring. It's not that great because it's not really tucked in enough to, to really protect your seedlings and they become stunted. So, so one thing is definitely to, um, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it works well in the late fall uh, garden. Like you can keep stuff in there until December, till Christmas, if uh, that's what you'd like. Okay. So as I said, I was going to talk briefly about cold weather crops um, because uh, they go hand in hand really with the cold frame, right? So they tolerate cold, uh, even frost, like um, and quite a bit of frost, actually. It's surprising. And there's three main reasons. Um, so first, some of them have this uh, purple pigment in them. Uh, that purple pigment is called anthocyanin. And you find that, of course, in kale, but in certain lettuce, and and um, that uh, purple pigment acts as um, an antifreeze. The other thing that um, many uh, cold uh, weather crops are, are are known for is to have those crinkly leaves, right? So it's called savoid uh, leaves. 
So the saboid leaves, uh, they allow for air, uh, little air pockets on top of the leaf, and which is uh, insulating. So it prevents them from freezing. And then the last uh, reason why cold weather crops are so good uh, for an early, you know, an early garden is that they, uh, they, they don't require a lot of light, you know, like six to eight hours a day of uh, daylight is more than enough to grow yourself uh, lettuce, scale, like, you know, any of these cold weather crops actually is all that's needed. Okay. Um, so uh, what I have here is, of course, is kale, lettuce, peas, Asian greens, radishes, Brussels sprouts. Those are, cold, uh, are known as cold weather crops, but not that great in the cold frame, though. Uh, beets, same thing, carrots. It's great as it's a cold weather crop, but not that great for a cold frame. But um, actually, so let's look. This is a cold frame garden list. So this is the actual list that I use. Um, these are the, you know, for beginners, really, like anybody can grow this, like, you know, these are just leaves, and uh, they're very uh, simple to grow. So, um, you know, so you have all these names, these, uh, these names of, um, of um, the species, but, uh, but then again, there's varieties, and there's cultivars, and there's so much to choose from. Oh, my God. So, you know, look and uh, enjoy. So I'm going to read um, this list for you. So lettuce, arugula, uh, radish, mesplin mix, spinach, corn salad. And then I have um, the next few are good for stir fries. So mustard, tatsoi, great for stir fries, bok choy, of course, rapini, gailon, kale, collard greens. Those do fantastic stir fries. So uh, so that's uh, it's a great food. And uh, then Mizuna lettuce and peas. Okay, so as I said, uh, choosing the right varieties is uh, so is often the right thing to do. So for example, for lettuce, like don't pick an oak leaf lettuce because um, it's it's really suited for the summer. Like you know, it's it's a summer crop. So pick like you know the bigger leaf uh, lettuces. K K K. Methodology. I'm almost done. Uh, so when you're going to be doing a cold frame uh, production, you definitely have to prepare your soil in the fall. Uh, so this time of the year, right? This is when you would start. And uh, the objective is to get your cold frame in the ground uh, prepared uh, by mid-October. So in this fall, uh, you, you would add like all your compost, uh, you would bring it all in, you know, and then uh, you would add uh, your amendments such as, like I like to put lime. Lime is um, a good contribution of calcium and magnesium and uh, it prevents um, diseases as well. It's really good for tomatoes in particular. So, so definitely prepare uh, your amendments and put them in there. And then once your area is done, like pick the, of course, the sunniest spot that you have in your garden, definitely pick that sunny spot in your garden. And, um, and then you install your cold frame. And then at that point, you would uh, transplant your last uh, fall crop. And so it could be lettuce, it could be uh, kale, could be spinach, could be what you'd like. And uh, but that you notice I said transplant, right? So that means that your last crop here, you have started it already in your main garden. And at this point, we're going to take all these little plants, seedlings, we're going to bring them into your main, uh, into your cold frame, right? And that crop is going to be ready in December. Okay, so what happens here? Uh, so winter goes by and uh, and then in early spring, actually, it's more like pre-spring. Uh, at the end of uh, February, I start watching my cold frame. And as soon as I see condensation on the walls, like you can see this picture at the bottom here, there's condensation on the wall, right? And so that's when I actually get in there and start uh, just scratch a little bit the soil and if I have a couple of inches of free soil, it's ready. It's time to go. So that's when to um, that's when I sow directly in the ground uh, the lettuce and the spinach, whatever it is that uh, from the list that I've given you earlier. So this is when you get going, and um, and then you you monitor, you water, and you do all the right stuff that you would do. And then in April, you bring in if you have room, you bring in your 
your um, your tender crops, right? To to harden them off. Uh, just one last thing before um, it, you know. You don't have to have a cold frame to grow things early. Um, you know, if you prepare your soil in the fall, and um, you know you make a little uh, rose like this, you know you kind of rake it in uh, to a row. Uh, you know, in the spring, like you know, let's say maybe the twenty first of March, start watching. If there's no snow on this, and you can scratch at the surface you know just put some seed like you know put some a, a row of mescaline mix or something like you know nice lettuce fresh lettuce something like that it will grow um it will probably grow okay so if it snows the problem is that if it snows again on top of it like i'm not talking about just a skiff of snow but if you have like a couple of inches it might stunt your seed right so if it does Eh, no big deal. You just rake it over and start again, right? It doesn't cost very much. So what I'm trying to say here is that you have to try. That's what I'm saying. Okay. So um, I think I'm pretty well covered. Um, what I wanted to say today, um, I'm hoping that you're thinking about extending your gardening season um, and uh, at both the early and the latter part of the uh, summer as well, uh, into the fall and winter, if possible. I'm hoping that uh, I've inspired you to go beyond the usual scenario. Uh, the usual scenario being we're going to be planting on May 20, the May 2 4 weekend. Let's go beyond that. Um, there's so much more to be learned. I mean, this, I just touched the topic today. There's so much more to be learned. So if you follow up in my bibliography here, you'll find. Um, you'll find quite a bit of material to, to ponder. And uh, so I remember um, the philosophy that the, the, the food supply chain was nearly broken at least twice in the last couple of years. And um, so we need to empower ourselves and become self-reliant. Thank you. Thank you, um, thank you, uh, Odette. So, um, so far we, we have one comment. Someone, someone said to you that it's uh, amazing information. So thank you. So people feel free to uh, add your questions. It's not too late. Um, so I have a few questions in the meantime. Um, what kind of plastic, Odette, do you recommend people uh, purchase? How thick does it have to be? Okay, so I don't I don't know what it's in mill like how thick it would be, but we use construction plastic, right? Uh, it's just like it has to be fairly thick and resistant, especially if you're planning to use your cold frame year after year after year. Um, yeah, you definitely need something like construction plastic is quite resistant. Okay, and um, have you have you ever had a situation where uh, you planted your your crop? your fall crop and you got caught by an early deep freeze or something, is, is there a risk? Do people have to maybe all of a sudden uh, get everything uh, in, in the fall? Have you had that situation? Well, I, I guess you have to watch the weather, right? The forecast, it's a, it's a good idea to watch the forecast and, um, and know that when you're gonna get this uh, minus 15 uh, surprise, uh, definitely go and harvest <laughs> before I would say you would. Um, but I've had, of course, I got caught uh, outside the main, like in the main garden. Like, uh, I like to leave uh, carrots, you know, until the frost, uh, a few, a few frosts have gone by and it's happened one year that we, we were gone to Costa Rica and we came back and the frost was so, you know, had, uh, <laughs> had taken the carrots and uh, we had to chip them out of the ground. So, wow. I mean, we, we ate, they were beautiful, but anyway. Okay. They, okay. They, so it does happen. Yes. And so, I think so, we uh, have time for just one more question. One then. more question. So, yes. So for people who begin this fall, um, so are you saying that they will, we, um, we plant our seeds in the ground, like we install the cold frame and then we plant directly the seeds or do you transplant little plants that have already grown somewhere else? 
So in the fall, for the fall uh, cold frame, you you yeah you just transplant from uh, you you probably have some seedlings already started. Like I have some letters that's already started in, in a pot, and um, so I'm going to uh, transplant those seedlings into uh, the garden uh, into my cold frame uh, garden, wow. right? So so yeah, definitely transplant them because starting starting them from seed it just takes too much time, and um, wow. you know it's not a big effort to just start them in a pot. One more, one more question from someone who says, is there a risk when you open the door that it gets the, uh, the cold in too much? Good question. And uh, so the, the top, like, you know, the, the model that I had in, in Toronto, like the one that are top, uh, the lid is on the top, definitely do that during the day, uh, you know, kind of 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and then be brief and close it back. And, you know, but the, the other model that I have with the, the door on the side, uh, that one is actually no problem. I don't I don't lose too much uh, heat from there. But when I go in, because I go right in, um, then I close the door behind me. So I don't stay too long. Yeah. I don't uh, leave it the very open. I don't leave it open very long. Thank you. Thank you, Odette. We thank you so much for your presentation today. We learned a lot. We learned about coal frames, why they're used. They're relatively cheap, and we learned that we can uh, gather fall crops and harden off our plants and grow uh, fresh stuff in the ground. So thank you, Odette, for uh, presenting with us today. And Claire, thank you for facilitating the questions. And please join us next week for Garden Mums, a fall staple with Denise Bono.